Oh man, I don't even know what SQ means, bro. Oh, square feet, square feet. Oh my goodness, I should go back to school. <laughs> Ayo, 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 what's poppin' everybody? My name is Brian from a Black and I'm back to you with another reaction. So today guys, I'm gonna be looking at the most expensive houses the world has to offer. Oh my God, man. I'm not ready for this, man. I'm not ready for this. My heart is just gonna be like, you know, aching and stuff, man. It's gonna be aching, bro. Oh man, God, I pray for, I pray for a mansion and I, 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 I know I'll have it. I know I'll have it. I'll have a mansion. I'm telling you, man. I'm speaking it into existence. That's why it should, you know. <laughs> That's what they say you should do, you know. Speak it into existence and it shall happen. I shall have a mansion. I'm telling you. You know, I'm telling you. So, guys, without further ado, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also share, you know, to your friends and stuff, you know, if you like my content. If, you, if not, you know, it's okay. Just leave it like that. I digress. But... Other than that, let's go into it. There are some homes out there that only the upper echelons of society can afford and that the rest of us can only dream about. Homes so outrageously extravagant you need to be a That's not a home, man. That's a whole building, bro. <laughs> Imagine. A billionaire to afford living there. So here are the top 15 most expensive homes in the world. Number 15, Opus. Kicking off our list is a modest home in Beverly Hills known as Opus. Yeah, this house is not modest for Jack, bro. This house is not modest. <laughs> this is not modesty, bro. This is, uh, bro. Opus is full of plenty of cool stuff to kick the asking price up nice and high. But what will really do your wallet in is the art inside. Sure, the architecture of the grounds is spectacular, but it's what's on the inside that counts, right? And so if you're an art connoisseur or a collector, then this place yeah. might be just for you. But what else is going on? This is too much, man. I'm already dying at the T-Rex. No, I already died at the infinity pool when I first saw the, the infinity pool as we they were zooming into the house. Oh my goodness. Damn, so this house is a lot of art, huh? I, I would like to have a T-Rex um, skeleton in my house. On inside of those walls, well, Opus has two separate bars and what is known as the wine station to help get your night going. Wow. Then there's the gourmet kitchen that comes complete with a coffee brewer that can be fully controlled by an iPad. A coffee machine being controlled by iPad. If that's not extra, I don't know what is. <laughs> what is known as the wine station to help get your night going. Then there's the gourmet kitchen that comes complete with a coffee brewer that can be fully controlled by an iPad. Oh and for the film buffs out in Beverly Hills, Opus also has a 15-seat private theater. Oh, they're watching Civil War. They got oh man. I just need the theater. I just need the theater and I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. You can keep the the rest of the house. I just need the theater. Because I basically watch things all day, every day, you know? So I just need the theater. All in all, the home has seven bedrooms, 11 bathrooms. It's more beautiful at night. Bathrooms, a 20 foot waterfall, two swimming pools, a 900 bottle wine vault, and a 117 bottle champagne vault. And seeing as how this entry is so low on our list, consider wow. it cheap at $100 million. $100 million? Oh my god. It shall happen. I'm still sticking to the. Yeah, it shall happen. I shall have a 100 million mansion. Number 14, 18 to 19 Kensington Gardens. You can see 18 to 19. Wow, you have this. You can basically call me the president because, wow, this is the closest thing to the White House, bro. 19 Kensington Gardens on the aptly named Billionaire Row in London. Kensington Gardens is just one of those homes of Lakshmi Mittal, an Indian business magnate and chairman and CEO of the world's largest steel making company, ArcelorMittal. And with credentials like that, you can rest assured that Mr. Mittal is a billionaire. 
Built in the 1800s, Mittal's mega mansion boasts around 55,000 square feet of space. Wow. That was once two separate abodes. It's got a red carpet on the outside, bro. It's got a red carpet on the outside. That should just tell you everything, cause wow what if it rains bro they just have it out there man just just for the sake of it man wow fifty-five thousand. oh man i don't even know what sq means bro oh square feet square feet oh my goodness i should go back to school it's <laughs> that he merged into one the first thing you'll notice when you pull up to Matal's absurd home are the 20 parking spots for all of his fancy rides the interior of the mansion has 12 bedrooms, an indoor pool, and even a Turkish bath for when Mittal comes home from a hard day of cashing oh. checks and counting all of the zeros. It's got an indoor pool. Oh my god. That's what I want. That's basically what I want. An indoor pool. I don't want people seeing me outside, man. Like, you know, I don't want to go outside. I don't want to go to the sun. What did the sun ever do to me? You know, what did it ever do for me, actually? You know, but it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. I want an indoor pool. <laughs> I'm just rambling, hey? Heroes in his bank account. But Mattel wasn't the first rich person to own the property. Some of his predecessors include the Rothschilds, David Khalili, and Bernie Eccleston. And when Mattel needs to ask his neighbors for a cup of sugar, he's knocking on the doors of none other than Prince William and Kate Middleton. Wow. Wow, they're staying next door, huh? And how much does it cost to have royal neighbors? Just $128 million. Wow. Number 13, 924 Bel Air Road. Next on our list is... He's got a chopper on the roof, so... Bruh. Wait, does the house come with the chopper? If it does, yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely getting this one. Like, who would want... Like, to not have a house with a chopper, man, like... A modest home situated in the Bel Air. Just, just look at the neighborhood, bro. Just, just, this is just look at the neighborhood, man. Like, damn, man. Is it one house? The the next house looks more bigger than the one that they're showing us. But damn. neighborhood of Los Angeles, 924 Bel Air Road looks more like a compound than it does someone's home. But lo and behold, this is where this legit looks like a GTA house. Like, this is how the GTA houses, GTA 5, this is how they look. One lucky resident gets to hang their hat and put their feet up at the end of a hard day's work. The 924 Bel Air Mansion has just two primary or master bedrooms in the 38,000 square foot abode. But take a look around and you'll find 10 look at the candy. And guest suites, three kitchens, five bars, a massage room, a wellness spa, and Damn. 21 different bathrooms, just in case you like a little privacy for one. 21 different ba Bro, that's too many bathrooms for me, bro. Like, to be honest, man. Like, I'm gonna probably be staying alone in the in the house, you know. Probably like, you know, if 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 I'm not married, I'll probably be like be staying alone in the house, you know, and probably get visitors from time to time. But damn, 21 bathrooms, man. What the fudge? Oh hell no, bro. <laughs> Bruh. When you hit the head. And no mansion is going to be complete without an infinity pool, four-lane bowling alley, outdoor theater, two wine cellars, and a helipad on the roof. There's so much going on in here that there's really no reason. Father God, please, please hear my prayer, <laughs> please, uh, please, oh, I want to mention God, please. To ever leave. But perhaps the best and yet most insane part of this Bel Air mansion is the candy wall. Because when you're. That's what I said. That's the first thing I noticed, bro. This is amazing. Bruh. If I have kids, they won't have none, bruh. Because, bruh, their teeth are gonna be gone. For this loaded, life is oh so sweet. And just how much is 924 Bel Air listed for? A cool 100 and. It's got a TV at the pool, bruh. Like, how, how does that work, man? Like, how, how's the wiring down there? Like, how? $50 million. Number 12, Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago made so many headlines from 2016 to 2020 that it just may be easy to forget that it's one of the U.S. president's many homes and not just some island getaway. 
The massive estate was built in 1927 by Marjorie Merriweather Post and was purchased by Donald Trump in 1985 for just 10 million bucks. And while the Wow, no, nah, Donald, Donald Trump had like made a steal, bro. No lie, Donald Trump made a steal. He got this house for 10 million. Do you see the other houses that uh, we, we just saw right now? Like this one is, looks like it's like times three bigger than those houses. And those houses, they, were, they, were, they say they, they 100 million. They are like over 100 million, if I'm not mistaken. And this, this house, he got it for 10 million in 1985. Damn, son. Oh man, why was I not born there? Why, why was I? Why was I not born at that time? Certainly is a lot of money. The man managed to add some value to his property over the next 30 years or so. And while he did convert it into a private club, it has since become his private residence again since leaving the White House. All in all, his house is insane and dripping with luxury. There are gold-plated sinks, antique furniture, and even. Why did I say before, man? Why did I say before? If I live in a house like this, I might as well become the president. Cause, brah, <laughs> brah. In a 20,000 square foot ah, yeah. ballroom that alone cost him seven million. It looks like a- Brah, I'll host my own Met Gala in this house, bro. No playing, no games. Brah, look at this, bro. Brah, I'll host my own Met Gala. You know, the thing about these big houses, man, is that like, you're gonna need a lot of help, like a lot of help, like hire a lot of people like to help you maintain this house. And having a mansion doesn't just mean that, you know, you just bought a house, you know, everything's now good, you just have to get grocery. Nah, you gotta get people to clean it, bro. Cause yeah, things get old real fast if they're not maintained. Place fit for a king and their court. But don't forget about his private golf club where he goes to hit the green, blow off some steam, and maybe even close a few deals. This house is not meant for me, bro. Like, I've, I'm gonna flex too hard, bro. No, no cap. I'm gonna flex too hard, bro. Every, every, on my WhatsApp, I'm gonna be just like, WhatsApp statuses. I'm just gonna be on, on that golfing. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody must just take my phone. Just, just take my phone away from me. And golfing is no cheap hobby. It's so big that it has a private helipad so the former president can avoid the area's beach traffic. He's got a helicopter with his name on it bro look at the cars oh my goodness bro and he's got he can even go with the jet ski there because it's connected to the is it a lake is it a dam i don't know that's the thing about it man if you've never been in a house like this you don't know if that's a lake or dam. <laughs> today this palm beach home has an estimated value of about 160 million dollars now it's got a now it's worth 160 million dollars but he bought it for 10 million bro that's all that was an investment, bruh. That was... Bruh, there's no liability in that. Number 11, the Jack Warner Estate. Before it was scooped up by one of the richest people in the world in 2020, the Jack Warner Estate in Beverly Hills, California was the home of the former record executive David Geffen. Now, the estate is just one of many homes of Jeff Bezos. Geffen bought... Jeff, oh my God. Jeff, why, Jeff? Oh. Jeff and Elon, bro, they just want to finish all the money, bro. <laughs> Give us a chance, man. <laughs> we also want some of that money, bro. Ah, come on, man. Bought the house for just $47.5 but the listing for the house in 2021 is probably enough to make the former owner cry with regret. That's because the Jack Warner estate went for almost three times as much, $165 million. The estate is a Georgian-style mansion built by the eponymous Jack Warner in 1936 with all the money he earned from creating none other than the Warner Brothers Studios. No wonder they purchased it. The original owner of, Jack, of, 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 of Warner Bros. was living in it. So they had to, they had to cop it. I would cop it too. You know, the studio that's produced what we feel like every movie ever. So the Warner Estate has certainly seen its fair share of millionaires and billionaires. So who knows who the next owner will be once Jeff Bay Me. Me. I'm the next owner. I'm the next owner. I'm telling y'all. I'm not asking y'all. Bezos has moved to space. Number 10. Four Fairfield Pond. Now this one... I'm done. This is... This is ultimate. This is... This is it. <laughs> this is the last game. This is the end game. Look at this, bro. This looks like... Bruh. This look... 
Ira Rennert, CEO and chairman of Renco Group, and all-around billionaire is the lucky owner of Four Fairfield Pond, an Italian Renaissance style. Why can't this guy be my uncle, bro? Like home in the Hamptons. There's no denying that the Hamptons is one of the wealthiest and most extravagant locales in the United States, but for Fairfield Pond really puts the neighbors to shame. The palatial home. It's got a beach in the back yard, my guy. I'm 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 done. I'm finished. I'm ashes now. He sits on 63 acres of beachfront property that Renner can enjoy all to himself. 63. But the mansion itself is an insane 62,000 square feet with 29 bedrooms so the man can sleep in a new... 29 bedrooms, bruh. I can put my whole clan in it, bro. My whole... Bruh. Bruh, my whole family in it, bro. I can put my whole family and there's still be rooms left. I'm telling you. Room just about every night for a month. 39 bathrooms, and what mansion would be complete without a 91-foot dining room? It really sounds more of like a banquet hall, if anything. Again, I'm a host my own gala. <laughs> and thankfully for his guests, Ira Renard knows how to throw a party. And we're sure that any children lucky enough to step foot inside this Hamptons home love a good game of never-ending hide-and-seek. But when folks want to have a little... I finna lose my kid in this, bro. <laughs> like, no lie, man. Like, like, he'll be gone for a month. Like, a whole month, bro. Like, I'll be like, bro. Might as well call the cops, man. I'm like, yo, man, I lost my kid. Like, what happened? Nah, we're playing hide and seek. Fun. There's the bowling alley, squash courts, tennis courts, three swimming pools, a basketball court, and icing on the cake, the garage that can hold up to 100 cars. He's got vintage cars, man. Look at those bands. And all of this can be yours for the price of $248 million. Number nine, Mesa Vista Ranch. Damn, son. Like, that's... Bro, like, you're basically a billionaire, bro. The Mesa Vista Ranch in the Texas Panhandle is absolutely stunning. Ridiculously big, sure, but still stunning. The property of the late American oil mogul T. Boone Pickens, the Mesa Vista Ranch sits on about 65,000 acres of land that functions a lot. This one got me feeling like I'm in Game of Thrones or something, you know? That kind of feels like creepy to me. I don't know. You know, that's just my opinion. More like its own small town. Boone lived on his ranch for close to 50 years, and during that time built all sorts of amenities both in and around the main house. So for starters, there were the 20 man-made streams and lakes that he was able to enjoy as part of his conservation effort. Wow, look at that. He's got lakes, bro. Like, there's divisions of lakes, bro. Efforts towards the area that make for an amazing southern oasis. And seeing as how there's so much property, you can bet that there are multiple abodes to choose from. There's the main multi-structured lodge compound that essentially acts as an on-site hotel for guests. And then if you hop in the golf cart and drive six miles southwest, you'll find the lake house with close to 12,000 square feet of space. Oh the entire compound is absolutely huge. This one is more of a classy house, you know. I, I, I like classy houses. Like, I, I'll legit cop it, you know. But I like a little bit more of Techno, like technological side, you know, of houses, you know, the more like, you know, yeah, the more houses that we saw, like, you know, previously. And it's amazing to think that it. This is a classic theater, like it's like curtains, bro. Really is just one man's house, but the Mesa Vista Ranch also keeps things interesting with its eleven thousand square foot dog. Bro, he's got, a, he's got a portrait of himself holding a jacket, bro. That's that's bowling level. A kennel, a chapel, golf fairways and greens, and then a private airport and even a pub. He's got a church in his yard, bro. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> I'm finished, bro. But I would love that, man. I, I would go there, pray, you know, bring my family, you know. Damn, might as well open my own church. I'm not kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Not a bad deal considering the entire estate cost 250 million. Number eight, Odeon Tower Penthouse. The Odeon Tower is- Like I said, man, this is a whole building. I, I don't count this as a, as, a, as a house, man. Like, cause it's like, it's sort of like an apartment to me, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's an apartment. Because like, it's a penthouse, it's on top, you know? So it means whatever's below here, you don't own it. You know, you don't own it. You just own whatever's up here, you know? And that's bad, man. You can't have your own privacy and stuff. It's a double skyscraper building in Monaco that is no doubt home to some of the richest people in the world. 
but it's not until you reach the 49th floor, the penthouse, that things really get insane. The Odeon Tower penthouse sits at the tippity top of this. First of all, I am not getting into the slide. No way, no way. Look at this, bro. This infinity pool. You get in the slide, you bounce off, you flipping go into this lower level, then you're out. It's it's done for you. You 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 you're falling off the building. <laughs> I'm sorry. Second tallest building on Europe's Mediterranean coastline, and it's by no means your average penthouse. And that's not because it encompasses 35,000 square feet of space, but it's because it's five stories tall, making it one of the most expensive homes per square foot when it was put on the market back in 2014. But we'll that's not bad though. Five stories, man. Damn. We've got levels to this ish, bro. We'll get to the price tag in a moment. It's also known as the Sky Penthouse. The Odeon Tower Penthouse gives the filthy rich owner a full 360 degree view of the Mediterranean Sea. Damn, full 360. Like, wow, that's that's amazing, man. That's amazing. You can see all sides. And hopefully, the owner isn't afraid of heights, because this place offers a full rooftop access with an infinity pool and a water slide that will take you down to the balcony below. That's what I said. I don't want to be taken down to the balcony below. I'm good. It's absolutely insane. And the whole place only costs 330 million bucks. You see, just 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 by saying 330 million, bro, like on a crib. Like on a businessman standpoint, that's already like that's like close to 20 houses, bro. Like if you really a businessman and you wanna invest in stuff, that's a that's like 20 million, bro. Damn. Number seven, the one Bel Air. Okay, back to Bel Air. There's no way that the uber affluent neighborhood would only house just one of the most expensive. Wait, 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 wait. My math is completely off. Uh, two three hundred and fifty million, right? And houses these days, like normal ass houses, like uh, I like to add normal houses, they start from one million uh, and above. So that's like three hundred and fifty million houses if you're getting one million houses. Like one, if you're buying a house for one million, then you, oh my goodness. Expensive homes in the world. Spanning almost 100,000 square feet, the house at One Bel Air isn't just one of the most expensive in the world, but it's also one of the largest in the United States. This wow. amazingly lavish property was developed by Niall Niami and designed by architect Paul McLean. And the entire endeavor took about 10 years to complete this mega mansion. The home for the rich and famous has 26 foot high ceilings, 21 bedrooms, 5 swimming pools, 42 bathrooms, and a 30 car garage, and puts the homes of even the richest neighbors to shame. And of course the house at One Bel Air sits on top of a hill with panoramic views of downtown Los Angeles, the San Gabriel Mountains, Damn. and the Pacific Ocean. How many TVs can a person need, man? Damn, do you see the TVs? So the owner can get just about every type of view. The bedroom has Bruh, this, there's no privacy in this, man. Like, bro, you go see my... ...you, depending on their mood. And of course, there's the price tag, as you can be sure that a place like this isn't going to come cheap. So just how much... Bowling alley. Oh, this bowling alley is so fresh. This is the freshest bowling alley I've seen as of yet, like, how's the standpoint? Does the one Bel Air cost? Try a whopping $340 million. Number six. The bo that's cheap. That's that's nothing. That's cheap. <laughs> Bubble Palace. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy this. <laughs> nah, hell no, bro. What is this, bro? Allow me SpongeBob. Nah, hell no. On the rocky cliffs of Massif du Listerel, along the French Riviera, is one terrible-looking home that only a true art you said it, not me. artist could ever understand or appreciate. The Bubble Palace was built by the world-renowned fashion designer Pierre Cardin and was no doubt home to his many insane parties over the years. The entire property is an amazing 13,000 square feet and is embedded into the cliffside. But the only problem is the entire home looks like the Flintstones of the future live there. The previous owner Cardin has said in interviews that the Bubble Palace's shape reminds him of the curves of a woman, especially a mother. No, they don't. <laughs> you just saw that picture, it was just full of girls, so... So the round compound makes him feel comfortable. 
The entire place comes with 29 bedrooms, a 500 seat amphitheater, gardens, pools, and even a reception. It does look kind of sick though, like no lie. Reception hall all across these funky connected domes. But perhaps the style does make some sort of sense, considering the construction began in- Whoa, it's kind of like, it's got like a, a, a stadium type feel. Yeah. 1975, but finally finished in 89. At the time, it's probably what Cardan thought the future would look like. Cut to 2021, though, and you're looking at a home that costs about $390 million. Number five. Yeah, you can miss me on that one. Oh, we're now on number five, okay. Villa La Cedra. Moving things over to France now, we have the Villa La Cedra. Damn. This palatial home was originally built in 1830 and was bought in 1904 by King Leopold II of Belgium. Uh -huh. Flipped through the calendar about 200 years into the future and the house went up for sale in 2017 by the Campari Group. The home's Nah, this is, a, this is a house for El Presidente. That's me. Current owner. And they're asking for a king's ransom as well. The Villa de Cedra sits on a humble 35 acres of land, most of which are covered in very well manicured gardens and cedar trees, where the villa earns its name. The home itself is an 18,000 square foot estate with 14 bedrooms. This is nice. I like chandeliers. I like chandeliers. Not, be, not, not, not just because of uh, who's that artist? Sia? S I A? <laughs> Chandelier! Why would anyone need a home with 14 bedrooms is anyone's guess, but perhaps they enjoy sleeping in a new room each night. You'll never get bored in a place like this. But moving about the villa that looks more like a palace and you'll notice also- The thing about it is that, do, do those houses come with like furniture? Or do you have to get your own furniture? Cause if I just spent like 350 million on a house, just imagine the furniture man, like imagine 29 bedrooms man, how am I gonna get 29 beds? Sorts of decadent interiors, like the numerous crystal chandeliers, intricately carved woodwork, and all sorts of 19th century oil paintings. And for when they get bored, the owner can head outside to the stables to go for a trot with the horses around the property, and maybe even stop Damn. by at their Olympic-sized swimming pool. So how much was the Campari group asking for the Villa de Cedra? Well, 410 million bucks. Damn. Number 4. Wittenhurst Mansion the Wittenhurst Mansion in London. Yo, this got. Oh, this is this is nice. I, I would cop this, man. England is a Georgian revival built back in the early 20th century, and since that time, it's been home to some pretty prominent and wealthy figures. It's even been used as a filming location for big-time movies like The Lost Prince, Tipping the Velvet, and Fame Academy. Needless to say, the Wittenhurst Mansion has a literal rich history, and so it should make sense that it's one wow. of the most expensive homes in the world. But it's also old and was subject to some natural wear and tear over the years, so it underwent a substantial refurbishment in 2008, which only adds to the value further. This London mansion is the second largest residence in London, with 90,000 square feet of space to explore and a grand total of 65 rooms, 25 it's of chide. which are bedrooms. It's chide. Why is this not number one? Like, why? It's chide, bro. But one of it's probably, probably like. Half a billy, bro. This house probably half a billy. The largest and most extravagant rooms here is the ballroom that's 70 feet long with 20 foot ceilings. The Woodenhurst Mansion also boasts a massive dining room, gallery room, and a billiard room when you want to shoot some pool at the end of the long day. And it only costs $450 million. 450, man. That's like 50 million short of half a billy. Number three. Villa La Lapolda. All right, we're getting closer. The Villa La Lapolda sits right on the ocean in. Oh, this view is uh, amazing. It's superb, man. It's wow. in France and is owned by Lily Safra, widow of the banker Edmund Safra. Right. And while she must miss her husband terribly, she was left with a pretty penny to take care of herself with. The Villa La Lapolda sits atop 50 acres on the Alps Maritimes department of the Côte d'Azur, and was even the setting for Alfred Hitchcock's. I love the trees. Filmed to catch a thief in 1955. So what's so special about this French villa other than the views, the acreage, and the fact that it's on top of a mountain? The property is home to a commercial greenhouse, an outdoor kitchen, the obvious oh. pool, and even a helipad, so Miss Safra can come and go as she pleases from just about anywhere in the world. But if the name La Polda sounds a bit familiar, that's because it's named after the same Leopold II of Belgium, who owned the Villa La Cedra. The king had a... 
Wait, like they can't show us pictures of like the inside or what? Like, is it that secretive? A lot of money and he knew how to spend it, but he gifted this French villa to his okay, there we go. mistress in the early 20th century. The home has since been redesigned and is now worth an estimated $750 million. $750 million. Just, just, just think about that. Just, just, just meditate on that number. $750 me leon dollars just yeah now look at your wallet now look back at me how do you feel <laughs> number two antilia tower antilia tower in mumbai india is one of the most extravagant places to live in the world wow. and one of the most expensive the antilia tower was designed in ah uh, no nah, it looks like it's gonna fall at any moment bro like <laughs> like no 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 ways bro like just check it out bro. part with like, bruh, it's got lots of gaps, man. The Chicago hey. architecture firm Perkins and & Will and the Santa Monica hospitality design firm Hirschbender Associates, all for one man, Indian businessman and billionaire Mukesh wow. Ambani. Antilia Tower is a 400,000 square foot residence in Mumbai's Kumbala wow. Hill with 27 stories that Ambani doesn't have to share with anybody. And of course, the massive home has plenty of cool stuff inside, like a 56. See, this is why I, I actually, I actually cop this because, like, you know, that's what I was talking about. He owns the whole entire building. It's not just the penthouse. It's not just the top part. You know, he owns the whole entire building. He's got 27 stories. You know, so I'll actually get this rather than just getting a penthouse and the rest. It's not yours. You know, it just, you know, it, it defeats the purpose of you know ownership eight movie theater six floors devoted just to car storage a car service station a wow. temple and nine high-speed elevators to get you from top to bottom and back again in a flash wow. oh and don't forget about the snow room a room that sprays wow. snowflakes from its walls it's absolutely insane and to have his own private winter wonderland in india ambani spent between one and two billion dollars he spent one and two billion dollars uh, I don't want to hear the price for this house. Number one, Buckingham. So the, the price was actually one and two. Be oh my goodness. Palace. Although it's a palace, it's important to remember that Buckingham. Yeah, number one. Yeah. Palace is still someone's home. The Queen of England's home has an incredible 775 rooms with 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 78 bathrooms, and 92 offices. Wow. And is so big that for all she knows, people have been living there for decades without Man. anyone even noticing. How hard could that be? And while the Crown owns plenty of castles and estates throughout the UK, they have owned Buckingham Palace for almost 200 years. Just think of all the history and stories embedded into these walls. And while Buckingham Palace isn't going to be put up for sale probably ever, you can most definitely put a price tag on it. In all, the estimated value of this palatial royal residence is about $3 billion. Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular. Wow, guys. Uh, I, I, I digress. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm finished, man. I'm finished. What? $3 billion, man. Oh, man. I'm finished, man. Wow, that's even be, be that's above and beyond, bro. Might as well call me Buzz Lightyear, man. I'm I'm done, man. Like my heart is aching. Um, my brain hurts. My pocket screaming. Uh, man. <laughs> but guys, other than that, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. You know, yeah, share. Just share to anybody you know that you think would like this video or would like to see this video or oh, please show support by just clicking and smashing the like the like button you know and just showing love or just commenting down below on how what you got or which uh amount of of like money you'd pay you know for for actual house you know for a mansion you know and other than that guys my name is brown demo black and uh, unlike the terminator i'll be back to stay peace